Anytime you put together a top 25 list, you're always gonna have a lot of issues. It's always gonna be very difficult because you're gonna have knives that you like just the same as another one, but one's gotta go on the list and one's gotta go. So I decided to put together an entire video all on its own of knives that should have went into my top 25. Now, before we check that out, you guys might remember my Ewin chair that I picked up um, not too long ago and I can't tell you how happy I am to have a good quality chair. It saves my back. My entire experience filming and editing and everything has just massively upgraded. So we wound up getting Kara one, and we wound up getting Kara a little bit smaller one, and we might get another one, get her a big one like this one, and I might take the smaller one and put it near the sharpening bench instead. But I have a discount code, 30% off. If you guys want to get yourselves any gaming chairs, office chairs, or whatever, it's 30% off on top of whatever sale is going on on the site as is. So you're getting a big discount. And like I said, these are high quality chairs. I can really feel the quality over time too. You know, just how it's breaking in, you know, how everything works, how it functions, how it's put together. So it is something that the, the longer I have it, the more and more and more I appreciate. It. So if you want to save yourself from walking around like a hunchback, I'm going to put everything down in the description with the discount code for 30% off. Let's get to the damn video. So starting it off, we have the Artisan Boa. Now, this technically is a pre-order knife, but I believe they fulfill the pre-order really quickly if you order them. It comes in multiple different versions, as you can see. I think it's five different versions altogether. We have four of them right here. The fifth one will just be a full dress with a different finish. The one we have here is a mirror-polished S90V blade. Absolutely gorgeous with a full Timascus frame lock pocket clip and backspacer that is all mirror polished and anodized absolutely gorgeous and this is the only one with the s90v the other ones are running s35 vn with a harpooned drop point blade titanium frame lock with an inlay or with a jig bone pattern you can get the inlay in carbon fiber micarta or like i said the jig bone now what's really cool about these is not only they're a great EDC size, the action is awesome. Like they have three forms of deployment and all of them work extremely, extremely well. This is a very well-placed, well-jimped, well-tuned detent for the front flipper. Then you have the thumb studs that are equally as good. They're well-placed, they're nice and grippy. The detent strength is perfect. And then you have the hole deployment, which also works really, really well. The size of the knife is literally exact, at least for my hand, it's exactly the size I need to have a full size knife while being compact. You can use it in any direction. The pinch grip is going to be really nice for this. And because it comes in so many different options, you know, you have everybody's flavor. Personally, for me, man, I, I like every single one of them for different reasons. Like this all blacked out one, the murdered out one. I think this thing looks so badass. It just looks great. I also love the micarta one, you know, with the inlay because I think this micarta is really, really good quality. And I'm happy that they use really good quality micarta on here. But all in all, the Artisan Boa totally should have been on the top 25 list. Just sometimes when you're putting one of those videos together, Together, it's very, very difficult to, to remember every single knife, and you have to kick some out. And it wasn't that I even kicked this out. I just, for some reason, I didn't think of it, and, you know, it happens. Next is two different knives. We have the Urban Barlow and the Urban Trapper. These are both Boker knives. Now, I think, you know, you could take either one. Both of them are really good. I will tell you my favorite one here in one second, but these are done by Riat. And to my knowledge, this was the first time Boker worked with Riat. It's a Brad Zinker design. And my goodness, is this a badass modern gentleman knife. It, it, it's solid enough to where, you know, it can be slightly tough for a small compact knife. The front flippers are exactly how you want a front flipper to work. I mean, they're just tuned super well, fantastic detent, very fidgety. This one has an, a K390 blade with a deep, both of them have deep hollow grinds, but K390 blade. Now, this one, I'm not sure if you can still get it. I don't think so. This one was a Knife Center exclusive. Um, it is still a titanium bolster lock with micarta and the milled titanium pocket clip. Fantastic access to the lock bar. But this one, I actually like the most. And the reason why is the size is literally 
perfect for EDC. I love this long slenderness that just makes it to where you have a lot of cutting length and then the detent is tuned a little bit stronger, at least on mine, on this one than this one. So this one's a little bit fidgetier, but that is probably just between my two. And, you know, I could 100% tune this lighter if I cared, but it's still really, really good. So I'm not upset at it at all. The front flipper works better than most. <laughs> so I'm not saying, you know, there's anything bad between them. Just saying one's a little bit of a stronger detent. But it has the same mill pocket clip, pretty much the same titanium bolster lock. This one's on M running M390 steel. And I just think one, Riet does a good job with their M390. So this is a time when I, you know, can say, you know, M390, this is pretty good. So they usually, they usually do a really good job with it, especially as far as the past couple years go. Um, but anyways, I, 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 I've never heard of Riet doing K390 otherwise, but, uh, but anyways, these two knives are absolutely badass. And if you are into the urban trappers and urban barlows and this kind of, um, modern take of a, uh, gentleman style knife, you know, that is a locking gentleman style knife. I think that these are damn near as good as you can get. Now, one I could put right next to these is the the Jack Wolf Knives Gunslinger. These are not available right now, but you know I do want to still you know give it some credit. Titanium bolt lock. This is the first time the Jack Wolf did a locking knife. It has a mega thin deep hollow ground S9EV blade. It just absolutely a slicer, very fidgety, great ergonomics, just an all around badass knife. But like I said, these are not available anymore. Maybe they will come back. I do know that there is a slip joint version coming very soon. Next we have the Tuya Wrath. Yes, I had to put this on the list because this to me, like it would have went right next to, if I was gonna put it in the top 25, it would have went right next to the Migaron Miro. Though these two have a lot of similarities. Um, it has a very deep, nice thin hollow grind, actually a dual grind, but a hollow grind here, flat grind here, even the flat grind has good geometry. Phenomenal access to the lock bar. It does have a Timascus pivot on one side, S90V blade, titanium mill pocket clip, and it is very, very smooth. The front flipper, you know, just like, you know, um, the, the, the Migaron Miro, it is the, like the best you could get a front flipper. It is so, so good. The jimping is nice and sharp, so it grips you back. The detent is tuned to perfection. You can do the side finger so easily. Very, very ergonomic. This thing is just an absolute banger all the way around. The, the, the micro milling on the handle is nice and sharp, and I mean that in a good way. And so, you know, it offers this tactile feel in the hand, you know, where you feel like you, you're never going to slip or, or lose this out of your hand it also still has the it also has the thumb studs normally i prefer texture on my thumb studs it actually worked out for these guys this one you know it works out really really well for this knife but usually i'd prefer a little bit of texturing around it but anyways that is another badass one then we have the giant mouse jutland giant mouse jutland what a beast i mean this was one of my favorite clip point buoy style blades of the year. There were a couple other ones, you know, I think uh, We Knife Co. had some like from the Magnetron and stuff, but this thing to me has some of the best action I've ever felt. No, it is, it does. It has the best, a it's on par with two other knives that are, have the best action from Giant Mouse. I mean, this has the, the most perfect tuned detent for a whole deployment. I mean, great detent, nice, strong, breaking action. Same thing with the flipper tab. This is a knife you're never going to fail. Um, now, this one has LMAX steel. I think Giant Mouse actually does a decent job with their LMAX. Uh, I definitely like it better than their M390. It does have a steel liner lock with this gorgeous micarta. Now, I don't think you can get this exact version right now. You can probably only get the G10 one if you can find them. Um, I'm not or maybe even, I'm not sure if the burlap one's available anymore, but they do have a burlap one um, with a different blade steel, but it does have a titanium backspacer that's crowned. And the geometry is really good, and it's just, you know, an awesome size knife that is very, very well done. I wish we seen more stuff like this from Giant Mouse.
as far as you know the 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 fit finish tolerances action detent and so on the chavez with the kickstop now this thing is a brick. It is a beast. It is badass, but that's why I love it. Not everybody's going to like this heavy of a knife or this size of a knife. Um, not that it's massive, but it's thick. You know, it's thick. It's, you know, slightly robust. The grind is very thin, though. It is a great slicer. This one has the Tonto, but it does come in different blade shapes. Dual ground Tonto, hollow and then flat up here. Um, these are made by Riat, and Riat does, you know, again, a good job with their M390 steel. It has a titanium frame lock. Now, if you don't like the skull clip, it does come with another clip that does not have the skull on there. Good access to the lock bar. And then it has the kickstop, which is a flipper tab that is detached or not attached to the blade. So it makes it to where... So it makes it to where the flipper tab can be put in a position to give you a ton of leverage. Where you're going to get maximum uh, maximum power into that, that flipper. And they tune the detent really well, as Riet usually does. And yeah, this is just an absolute badass knife. I love how aggressive it looks. I personally like the skull clip, the way it looks. I wish it was a little bit smoother and out of the pocket, but I love the way it looks. And, you know, I love how aggressive the knife looks. I love the lockup. You know, it feels very, very solid. And you can really feel that lock bar engage. Same thing with the detent on the clothes. Every little detail just feels very, very well done on this knife. Next is the Precision EDC Warn Tack. Now, this was one of my favorite Warn Cliffs of the year. This has a obviously it's by precision knife works but it has a precision blade and this blade with this handle it has this moon shape that to me just works it doesn't matter what direction you want to cut in whether you're slicing whether you're cutting down whether you're cutting backwards whether you're tracing something um you know gas station knife fighting grip all of them work it has um, really well done micro milling over the titanium. You can see they put the lock bar cutout on the inside, exactly how it should be. The clip works great. TA hardware all the way around. Good access to the lock bar. Very, very well tuned detent. The thumb flick is not as good as the reverse flick, but you can still do it. But the reverse flick is money. Um, just extremely ergonomic. The jimping is the, is the right kind of jimping. You know, if you're going to do jimping, I want this kind of jimping, you know, where it actually works. Next, something funky, because you guys know I like the weird and the crazy, and you don't see too many Chris's out there. This is the Kawanagari by CMB. So we got the CMB Kawanagari, and it is a front flipper, with a crisp blade shape and M390 steel. Now you look at that and most people would say, is that thing even useful? I can't tell you how useful this is. Yes, it might be frustrating to sharpen. You just need to use a round stone or the corner of a small stone. Um, so you do have to, you know, uh, sharpen it. You have to kind of know what you're doing with sharpening at least a little bit, you know, as far as what stones to use, which is not that difficult to do. It's an easy, it's easy to sharpen otherwise, but it does have these curves and these curves actually benefit you when slicing. It's almost like it traps material all the way to a certain point and then it traps it again. You feel like it's like double, triple trapping materials. Then this tip, it's like a claw. You can pop it into something, open something up. It, you know, it's just, you do utility cuts. It is a blade shape that you would never think would work as good as it does. Now, as far as self-defense reasons, I'm sure that would be good for that too. But as far as like just regular everyday carry cutting tasks, you know, opening things up, breaking down boxes, packages, this is a really good one. And if you used it for regular light duty use, you're not going to have to worry about sharpening it constantly. You know, it, it'll hold an edge very well. Just make sure you tune it up, hone it here and there, strop it here and there, and, you know, don't cut anything ridiculous. Titanium frame lock, titanium mill pocket clip, and backspacer. We have a carbon fiber, uh, well, an aluminum carbon fiber, so it's a carbon fiber with aluminum flakes inside of it that I think looks great. And to me, I love it. And I kind of wish it was just a little bit bigger. That'd be the one thing that I, I wish I could change, but it is still a full-size knife. So while I wish it was a little bit bigger, it's still a really, really good size. 
phenomenal action too. They did a really good job. The Best Tech Leto. Now this one I know a lot of people did not try. So I know you guys are not going to appreciate this one as much as I do. I'm not even a big small knife guy. Like there's small knives I like. You know, we've actually shown some on the, the channel just, you know, recently. Like, you know, like I love these size knives. I think they're great. This is super compact, but you actually can get a full grip on it. And because of the blade being such a good drop point and the way this whole thing cants down, it makes it to where you can, it's just so useful. Great access to the lock bar, very comfortable. It's got nice texturing on the lock bar as well. So the disengagement is, you know, just done super good. The the, the thumb studs are very well tuned for the, or the detents very well tuned for the thumb studs, well placed, very smooth. It has a deep carry wire clip that is reversible. The inlays are, and there is different versions, but this one is the, the micarta inlay and the micarta is really good. I think this is black micarta. You can see it kind of starting to turn turn black titanium bolster lock you know it, it's but it's a unique bolster lock because it's an inlay kind of bolster lock i guess you could say um anyways i freaking dig it i love it i think it's like i said i think it's done super well uh m390 steel yeah best tech does run their m390 a little bit on the softer side so that is something you're gonna have to consider but as far as just a little light duty pocket knife my goodness, is this a great premium knife. But I haven't heard anybody else talk about it because I don't think anybody else has tried it. Next is a little fixed blade from Auxiliary Manufacturing. This is the Pocket Buoy. You can see right here, we got the Pocket Buoy. Now it does come in different handle materials. Um, this one I think is the most more affordable one with this G10, but there is other ones. I like that it has these uh, micarta pins. I love that. I would have loved to have gotten it in this micarta, but very comfortable in the hand, very robust. It is AEBL, which is a, a, an off the wall tough steel. It is very, very tough. Now it's not a steel that's gonna hold an edge for a super long time, but it'll still hold an edge. And it's you know stainless. It comes with a Kydex sheath with a belt loop. You could put um, you could probably put a tech lock on this if you wanted to. The tension. Very well done for the sheath, man. Really good. And it is, you know, a recurved buoy. Now, usually I do want a choil here, but I kind of understand this. You know, you get the whole cutting length. If you're going to slice, you know, you don't have to worry about snagging on anything. You're just going to be able to do repeat cuts. Not that this is really a slicer or anything, because you can see it is very thick and robust. This is more, in my opinion, of an EDC slash self-defense knife. You know, it's something you can use in a pinch for self-defense, but you can also take it out of your pocket, you know, and, you know, skin a deer or break down some cardboard or, or cut your sandwich up or something like that. Um, now, if you don't want the recurve, you can easily take it out yourself. And when you sharpen it, the one thing is you're gonna have to use the corner of the stone to get up inside this little section here. Um, I would recommend using half inch stones, but you could probably get by with whatever stone as long as you use the edge of it to get up here so that you can kind of curve it out. And you know that'll you know just get uh, more pronounced and more pronounced as time goes on. But anyways, um, USA made badass little knife. It's it is a little compact knife, but you know normally on paper this would not be my style at all. But there's just something about it that I dig. Now, really quick, I have to shout out Jack Wolf Knives again because he is making some of the best um, slip joint knives I've ever experienced. He's actually really really gotten me into slip joint knives. Now, some of these are actually still available. Um, not all of them, but I will link what I can down in the description. He actually does have um, one of his locking knives available right now, but you know, just these are all extremely well done. If you are into slip joints and you want premium quality, which is exactly what you get from Jack Wolf, then these, in my opinion, are a must. This is, I actually wound up even giving one to one of my uncles because, um, you know, he always carried a slip joint my whole life and he's, you know, uh, I love all my uncles, but he's definitely one of my favorite uncles. So, you know, I wanted to make sure he got something super high quality like this. You know, and 
he might not understand exactly what he has, but that's okay. You know, I know what he's got. And, you know, all the different designs, as you can see, I'm just pulling one after another out. These are so cool. I freaking dig them. I think there's still some of these available. Um, I'm not 100%, but like I said, I'll link everything I can down in the description. But these are S90V or M390 steel titanium bolsters with um, every single one of them has like four or five different options for inlay or overlay materials. You can get custom sheaths done. These were done by Richter Knives. Um, <clears throat> And then uh, John Powell made these, but I, I'm not sure if he has them available right now. This one's a little Caval one, and these are the ones you actually get from Jack Wolf when you buy your Jack Wolf. Anyways. And last, the Dagger Mermaid, which is the first time I ever seen an OTF done like this. You have an OTF with a karambit ring with a switch in the reverse grip. Or you can have it in the forward grip because there's a switch on both sides. Now you can take one of them out if you prefer only to have one. It has an aluminum body with this uh, diamond texturing on the aluminum, titanium mill pocket clip with you know a skull feature that uh, Dagger does on their clips. Then the blade is a bayonet style blade shape in VG10 steel. Now I know the date right here says 1122, but that was literally at the end. I didn't get it until 2023. They might've made them in 2022, but you know, I don't think anybody got them until 2023. So they have to be a 2023 model in my opinion. Um, maybe I'm wrong about that. Either way, this is the first time I seen an OTF anything like this or anything like this from an OTF. So there you guys go. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.